Hey, this is Joel Duff. Welcome back. Yeah, should I do this? I've really been thinking, you know, should I actually do this? Should I take my time to attempt to explain something I've already explained twice? I've already, I've, I've thought I've gone through enough detail to paint the picture and to illustrate my point. Should I do it again? Does this require a third attempt? Is it worth it? To me, it hardly does seem worth it because I know there's no chance of actually getting through to the the individuals that uh, are having trouble grasping this idea. Um, and so then the question I'm left with is, is there any relevance to a, a greater audience? And at this point, you're thinking, Joel, what are you talking about? Like, you know, you haven't even said what the deal is here and what the issue is. Well, if you see what's over here to my side, you'll see that um, I'm showing you some of my recent videos. And uh, two of those recent videos uh, involve the same topic. And that is the question of do animal kinds, uh, are there modern animal kinds, mammal kinds, that have been found preserved with dinosaurs? Because there's this claim out there that there are modern mammals, specifically something like a beaver, or like a rabbit, um, like a hedgehog, like a squirrel, possibly a flamingo, right? Modern animals that have been found preserved with mammals. All right, and I made this claim, and I, you can see my bold title here, this answers in Genesis lie needs to stop. And I explained in the video why it's a lie. And I showed an Answers in Genesis speaker saying, you know, talking about this. And then I explained why what he's saying is a lie. Right. After that, I felt the need to follow up on it because I heard the originator of that misinformation, Dr. Carl Werner, repeat his claims. And so that's why the second video, Carl Werner continues to lie about fossils. By the way, if you if you know Answers in Genesis videos, you know that my thumbnails are something of a commentary on the Answers in Genesis videos because I'm mimicking their style. For example, here's some recent videos from Answers in Genesis, and you notice this one here. You have been lied to. All right, this is way off. Right, I see this quite a bit in Answers in Genesis videos lately. You know these very bold statements. Um, using the word lie quite a bit. And so my color scheme, all right, my blue arrow and so forth are like, you know, like what I'm saying is I'm 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 trying to show you like look at answers in Genesis claims. And I'm saying this this really is a lie, okay? Because often I watch their video and it's like, this is not really a lie. I mean you don't maybe you don't understand what you're talking about yourself. Um but this is all to say that Answers in Genesis makes this claim all the time that others are lying, right? Whereas, uh, you know, I use that term and I've gotten a lot of pushback from people like, you know, I, you know that, that's too strong of a word. You, you shouldn't be using that word. Um, and, I, and I knew when I said it, but I, I reserved it for a special situation, right? I said, I reserved this for like, this is a lie. I don't know how to get around defining it as anything else. Uh, and I and I need to call that out. So what we're going to do here? This is this is what we have before us. This is this is what I want to try to do. I'm going to show a really short video clip, which is just going to be a little piece of that first video showing answers in Genesis talking about uh, modern mammal fossils being found with dinosaurs. Right. So I get that that's, that reminds us of what the ma the main claim is. Right. Then we're going to take a look at the original article. All right, we're going to look at the paleontological report of the beaver, the, I'll put it in quotes, the beaver fossil that's been found with dinosaurs. All right, and I'm, I'm going to take you through the original research paper and we'll look at the description and characterization of that particular fossil and ask ourselves, does that match the description of how Carl Warner talks about that particular fossil? and specifically the answers in Genesis speakers, how they speak about that particular fossil. And then we'll sort of talk about the fallout of that and what a lie is and whether 
what they're doing is a lie or what they're saying is a lie. Oh, and by the way, here's the, here's the video that, that recently came out that is a, um, a response to my two videos. Uh, so two hours and 48 minutes of talking about how I'm the real deceiver in this particular case. And again, this video is not meant to be a defense, all right? I am simply doing the one thing I've asked both Carl Warner and the author of this particular YouTube channel. I've simply asked them to look at the original paper. As I've said, just read the original paper and tell me that that organism, it's proper and okay to refer to that particular organism as being like a beaver. And by like, I mean like it's nearly the same thing as a beaver. And it's okay to lead your audience to believe that that represents the beaver kind or a type of beaver, a modern beaver. Right. Uh, I just used a bunch of words and there's going to be some semantical issues involved in this because it's going to be very important to define these terms. Um, like, like, actually the same kind, all those are important terms in terms of setting the background for why this is a lie. Um, and I'll hope to do this relatively quickly, not two hours and 48 minutes. Certainly not. Okay, the first thing we have to do is we have to identify the source of misinformation. What, what is the problem that we're addressing here? And we're going to do that by showing you this short video of a speaker at Answers in Genesis who's just giving like a public talk. Uh, and he's talking about a whole bunch of different things and then comes to this thing of talking about fossils that have been found and what the characteristic of the fossil record is. Right? He's going to describe the fossil record, and let's listen to what he has to say. Separate presentations on, on dinosaurs, but I want to talk just briefly about dinosaurs here. Evolutionists are often under the impression that we don't find modern-day mammals and other creatures buried with dinosaurs. Actually, we do. By nautilus, beetles, crayfish, lobsters, beavers, squirrels, flamingos, hedgehogs, cormorants, sharks, dragonflies, parrots, rabbits, horseshoe crabs, sandpipers, grasshoppers, crickets, all buried with dinosaurs. Okie dokie. There we are. So, um, we're not even going to talk about all the lies that he just told. Let's just focus in on one at first, and I'll give you some other examples. So in that particular video, we took a look at um, his claim about uh, beavers being found, hedgehogs being found, and a couple other animals. That these are modern species or modern kinds of organisms that are found right alongside dinosaurs. And so we're going to go back and I'm just going to, we're just going to talk about one thing today, and that is the beaver. Right? You heard that claim by an Answers in Genesis speaker that modern animals are found, modern mammals are found with dinosaurs, and he mentioned beavers are found with dinosaurs. I only know of one record, right? There's only one fossil that I know of, one report in all of the scientific literature of any organism that is mentioned to have a characteristic that is similar to beavers that has been found in the fossil record in the time slice of dinosaurs, all right? In the same rocks that dinosaurs are found in, all right? Just one report. And so we need to look at that particular report and ask, our, ask ourselves, has a modern beaver been found with dinosaurs? All right, let's do that. And then we'll discuss how Carl Warner kind of tries to tweak the language there to try to get around this being a lie, but he doesn't succeed. Now, this paper is the paper that I have asked the author of this other YouTube channel to look at. I've said, just go find that paper and read it. Test Carl Warner's claims. Carl Warner claims that this is a modern mammal that has been found. Something that looks like a modern mammal. I just used the word looks like. We'll come back to that in a moment. Looks like a modern mammal that's found with dinosaurs. This particular YouTube channel author just accepts that as 
evidence that modern mammals are found with dinosaurs. This person that's complaining and saying that I'm lying about this situation has yet, as far as I can see, to have actually looked at this particular paper. And I've insisted that you don't know the truth. You can't assess the veracity of Carl Warner's claims until you have looked at this paper and examined what he has claimed about it. So here we are. It's from the journal Science. This is way back in 2006. So this paper has been available right, for hmm, 19 years now. 19 years this paper has been available. And since this paper was published, I have not found any other record of any other fossil that uh, that anyone could claim would be representing a beaver in the time of the dinosaurs. So this is it. This is the entire known fossil record that has been suggested to be something like a beaver. But is it a beaver? A swimming mammalia form, right? Not strictly in the crown group of mammals like all the mammals alive today, but in a broader group of mammals. That's your hint right away that this is not going to be a beaver. But and where's this mammalia form found? It's found in the middle Jurassic. Right? And as they're saying here, this represents one of the early mammals. Right? But our, our main question is, is this a modern mammal? Like finding this, is that is that worthy of saying that modern mammals have been found with dinosaurs? Uh, now, if you look at the cover of Science in 2006, it was graced by this particular artistic rendition of what this uh, organism might have looked like, right? So this was a find that was uh, big enough that it was represented on the cover of Science, which is one of the biggest uh, science journals in the world. And so look at this critter, and you'll notice, of course, this kind of flat tail. And that flat tail does look like a beaver tail, right? It has the appearance, it has a similar form to a beaver tail, just like the fluke of a dolphin looks very much like the fluke of an ichthyosaur which is a reptile from the dinosaur age. All right, so they, they look very similar. Uh, and it's a potentially swimming organism. Now, notice the face, right? It's an elongated jaw. And we'll take a look at uh, the, the teeth from this particular animal. That's going to be important. Let's look at the first line here. We've got a docodontin mammaliaform. Now these might sound like these are probably very foreign uh, words to you, but do, docodontins are a group of mammals that have been uh, identified. And there's multiple different types of fossils that have been found that have been grouped together because of common characteristics they have in their anatomy that are all considered to be an extinct group of mammals. In other words, we don't have any living relatives alive today. Right? And if we don't have any living relatives alive today, descendants of this particular group, then clearly the, this isn't a beaver. All right, This isn't something that is just like a beaver because it left no descendants. Uh, that's from the Middle Jurassic. Uh, swimming and burrowing skeleton adaptions and some dental features for aquatic feeding. So the dental features are going to be important here. It's the most primitive taxon in the mammalian lineage known to have fur and has a broad, flattened, particularly scaly tail analogous to that of modern beavers. Ah, so now here's the mention of beaver. So this is why this is the only fossil that mentions beaver in the description. Now, they use a very important word here. It's analogous to a modern beaver. It doesn't say it is the same as a tail in a modern beaver, it has it's analogous. It has similarities to a modern beaver, and therefore, you know, if you wanted to, if you wanted to say what does this character most look like that you're familiar with, because this is a this is an extinct group that is completely different than all other. It's a completely different lineage than all other mammals that are alive today. But now, do you want to know kind of like what it might look like? Well, it has a similar feature to beavers, and so it has a tail that's analogous to beavers. We infer that docodontins were semi-aquatic, convergent to the modern platypus. In other words, they also have features that are like platypus or platypi. 
right? Well, now platypi are egg-lay mammals. Beavers are placentals. I mean, we did very different types of organisms. So, so already we're seeing like this organism is kind of like got some features of platypi, and it's also got a feature that is analogous to a beaver. Um, this fossil demonstrates that some mammalia forms or proximal relatives to modern ma mammals developed diverse locomotory and feeding adaptions and were ecomorphologically different from the majority of generalized small terrestrial mesozoic mammalian insectivores. Yes, the three or four hundred different species of mammals that have been identified that um, from the fossil record during the time of the dinosaurs so are contiguous in the same strata as dinosaurs are all very small now by small i mean like you know less than a pound usually you know five inches to like a foot long at the most uh rodent tight organisms that probably in probably ate insects all right and that's based on the the tooth architecture that tells you something about what their diet was Right, so you have hundreds of mammals that have been identified that lived with dinosaurs, but they're all these very small things that were often uh, burrowing under the ground. Now, here you have one that might have been able to swim and had features for eating, uh, having aquatic feeding. And so that makes this particular organism quite different, a, a very different type of mammal than all the other types of mammals that have been identified that live with dinosaurs. That's why it's on the cover of science. Okay, because it represents like a, a, a great expansion in the overall diversity of mammals known from this particular time period. Uh, the Middle Jurassic mammalian diversification gave rise to several emergent clades, basal uh, eucodontrans, uh, cladiotherans, and basal mammalian lineage of, you know, here's a bunch of names I can't pronounce. Uh, these are all groups that no longer exist today. They're all extinct groups. Docodontans are a Mesozoic mammalian form lineage that have specialized molars for omnivor omnivorous feeding. Several lineages are known from the Middle Jurassic, like all of them are extinct by the time the dinosaurs are also extinct. Here we report on a large Docodontan mammalian form that has some dental features for feeding on aquatic invertebrates and small vertebrates, plus specialized skeleton and soft tissue features for swimming and burrowing. It's also the very largest, the largest known mammal form of organism, right? That's related to today's mammals. So in that way, you could say they're they're, they're they have the most similarities with modern mammals, but they aren't a modern mammal in the sense of being like being any of the major types of mammals that are alive today. Um, that's the largest one known with the dinosaurs. How and you're wondering, like, how big? Oh, let's let's go take a look here. Uh, how big was it? Um, Castrocotta, that's the scientific name that has been given to this particular fossil, is the largest known Jurassic mammalia form uh, by its preserved skull length of greater than 60 millimeters and well-established scaling uh, the skull, we estimate the body mass of the holotype specimen was at least 500 grams. The preserved length from rostrum to tail is 425 millimeters, that'd be 42.5 centimeters, right? Or less than two feet from the tip of the nose to the end of the tail, you yeah. know, right there. You know, that's the length of it, 500 grams. You know, maybe, maybe, a body range, right, of maybe up to 800 grams, right? Whereas a platypus is 700 to 2,400 grams. I don't know if you realize how small platypi are, but you know, 2,400 grams is a whole lot bigger than this particular fossil is. But 2,400 still isn't that much, right? So this, this beaver, right, is maybe 800 grams. So we're talking less than two pounds, right? Less than two pounds, a little tiny animal. Whereas your beaver is like 35 pounds to 100 pounds. This is a tiny organism. So even though the picture makes it kind of look like, you know, kind of look the shape of a beaver, it's actually a, a very small organism. And you know, large things are preserved in the fossil record in the age of the dinosaurs since lots of dinosaurs are really big. 
right? So that's a really interesting, unique feature of the fossil record of the of the ob those are the observations we have. Those are the facts that we know about the things that we have found with dinosaurs that we can identify as having mammal like characteristics, mammal like anatomy, right? Mammal like teeth that we then characterize as being part of the lineage of all mammals. All right, but we don't know. I mean, these things may have laid eggs. They might be more like, you know, the egg laying monotremes than they are any of the, the, the more modern mammals you think of as being like the placentals and the marsupials, all right? But they're all tiny. So we know of hundreds of species and every one of them is smaller. That's pretty amazing. That is an amazing feature of the fossil record. And, and anyone who wants to explain the, that observation, those facts, needs to have some kind of hypothesis to explain why those are the only types of fossils that are found. All right, let's, let's uh, take a quick look at a few other features. I'm, I'm running a lot longer than I thought I would. Um, the description. Uh, all right, I'm not going to go through all these things, but I would encourage anybody, to, I'll put a link to it. You can go look at this paper yourself. First of all, let's look at the teeth, right? These teeth right here, and it describes them as being like um, teeth that would be found in, say, whales. It doesn't say anything about these teeth being anything like a beaver, right? These teeth are teeth of organisms that are filtering and feeding on, like, catching fish, right? Small prey krill maybe all kinds of uh, small things in the water basically filter feeding through the water um, and look at the snout of this thing right it's got this long snout and you see that uh, there's no front incisors because what does a beaver have hmm, let's take a quick look at a, of a beaver skeleton wow look at that thing right there all right there is a beaver skull look at these teeth Look at these giant molars. They only have a few teeth in their jaw uh, for grinding. And then, of course, what they're famous for are these very large incisors in the front, which are greatly extended. So the jaw is extended out. No teeth actually on part of that jaw. And then you put your incisors out on the end. It's like you know, just pulling my jaw out and putting my front two teeth top and bottom. And of course, that's what they're doing to gnaw through wood. And really, this is a characteristic of rodents, right? I mean, almost all rodents have these characteristic front teeth. You know, so compare that to this organism. It's got a row of teeth, right? And here are the teeth, right? Completely different architecture of the teeth, right? They have similarities to some modern mammals. Right, but they also have a lot of similarities to the other do docodontids. Right, and they're clearly not a rodent. Right, this is not the rodent version. Right, of mammals. Like all rodents have a certain jaw with a certain kind of teeth, uh, and this doesn't have any of those characteristics. So, however you want to break down, if creationists want to break down rodents into multiple different kinds that God created separately but with a similar pattern to them in terms of their jaws and their types of teeth that they have, uh, then fine. If they want to put them all in one kind, um, if you found a fossil that had like a rodent jaw with rodent type teeth in it, right? And other an anatomical features like a rodent, then you could say that a rodent had been found with dinosaurs, but no such thing has been found there. I don't know of any rodents that have been found that have rodent characteristics the the pack the whole package of features of rodents right it doesn't have to be identical i'm not saying you have to have the identical shaped tooth but you have to have the general features of the group of rodents that represent them right so the teeth are no match at all completely different jaw extended long jaw uh it has a completely different function than any other rodent of which beavers are just a subtype of rodent Right, so looking at the looking at this portion of the fossil, no one's going to call this a beaver. So they mention beaver in this paper, and they talk about it being beaver-like because it's kind of like a beaver-like habit, like it might have lived in a uh, sort of a, a lake environment with ponds, 
and it, and it swam and ate in those ponds, right? But it wasn't cutting down trees and making dams, right? There has no features in this organism that would allow it to do it, allow it to do that. All right, so what about the vertebra, right? Specifically the tail vertebra or the caudal vertebra, right? Because that's the feature that's similar to beavers. So here we have a cat. Uh, we have another mammal from um, the dinosaur age, okay, uh, with its tail. Uh, very, very short, though. See, this is five millimeters in size, whereas this is five centimeters in size for, for a cat. So I just want to make sure you, you get that scale there. Um, Castrocata, that's our Jurassic beaver, all right? Um, that has these vertebrae here and then it's showing castor castor is the genus that beavers are in right the scientific name for beavers now you notice the similarities castrocata well castrocata well these are caudal vertebrae so they're saying like the vertebra in the tail have similarities to beavers actually they're also similar to river otters because that's what's down here um this this organism here and that's lutra yeah, Lutra, Lutra canadensis is the river otter. And river otters have vertebra, caudal vertebra as well that are similar to this particular fossil. So it's as, really as similar to a river otter as it is to a beaver. Uh, but they decided it's like, you know, it actually has slightly more flattened uh, sides to the vertebra, forget my vertebra, vertebral uh, language here, because um, there's lots of different anatomical features of every vertebra, uh, of every vertebrae. And the vertebrae of this thing has similarities to this, but I think you can see that there's a much bigger, wider, uh, each vertebra has a, is greatly extended, right, and flattened out. And that allows it then to have the muscle attachment and so forth to add, the, you know, and have flesh out there, right, farther. And that's what gives you your more paddle-like feature of a beaver. And so there is a slight bit of that in this particular fossil, right? Allowing you to imagine, and actually the fossil actually has an impression of the fur, suggesting that it's wider in the tail than most other organisms are, right? Especially other mammals at the time. And that's why it is kind of got like a beaver-like thing, right? So this thing looks like it swam in the water and it could have used its tail a little bit to help propel itself. Great. All right, so let's not belabor this point any further. It's, you know, there are different, there are some similarities in the vertebra, but these are not enough similarities to be able to say, to, to, to say like, oh yeah, well that clearly is related to that other thing, right? There are river otters that also have similar vertebra. And so that you could make a case that they're related to river otters, which are a completely different kind of organism. Um, so you have the tail, and that kind of looks like some similar to some modern mammals. But the other feature of the organism are a hodgepodge of other characteristics that have similarities to other modern mammals. Right? Any organism from the past is going to have some similarity to an organism today. Uh, I just want to point out this. Its semiplagic feeding adaption is similar to that of modern river otters. Right, so I think that the diet and the way it ate and its jaw is more like a river otter. Could have very well just named this as the Jurassic otter as much as they could have the Jurassic beaver. All right, so we talked about the size of these, far smaller than a beaver. And I think that's all we need to look at in here. All right, if you read the papers, all kinds of references to other little uh, components and parts of this particular fossil. But the summation of it is this. The head is nothing like a beaver. The teeth are nothing like a beaver. Um, the rib cage is not like a beaver either. The tail has some similarities in the vertebra that give it a the characteristic like a beaver, but it doesn't mean it is a beaver just because it has a slightly flattened tail. After all, there are other mammals that have flattened tails, and that doesn't make them beavers just because they look like they have something like a beaver tail. So what's going on here? What's the problem? Why not just, why insist that modern beavers lived with dinosaurs? 
Now, when I said it that way, here's what the response is going to be. Right? Carl Warner will, um, he'll, he'll fudge at this point and say like, well, I didn't say that the exact version of a beaver was alive with dinosaurs. I'm saying that scientists called this the Jurassic beaver. So even they recognize this thing looked like a beaver. And so therefore there was something that looks like a modern animal alive with dinosaurs. Okay, if that's what you mean, then you need to say all that so that your audience understands this thing kind of looked like a beaver because it has the tail of a beaver. It is not at all related to a beaver. It's not related to rodents. It is, it is nothing like the modern group of mam uh, mammals that you're calling it similar to, which is a beaver. Right? It's distinctly not something that God created as a beaver. He created it as something different. Right, and so he needs to communicate to his audience, and this this uh, this YouTube channel also he needs to commu communicate to his audience that this is not a organism that is represents a living group of organisms today. All right, if you want to continue to say this organism looks like a beaver and beavers are alive today, well then say that, but be really clear that it is not a beaver it's like it just isn't there's uh, there's there's no way you can force this into being a beaver all right and so you're gonna say well i didn't say it was exactly like a beaver great here's the problem i showed you that answers in genesis clip what do you think the audience thinks if i were to survey the audience after they come out after listening to that speaker say that hey Evolutionists say that there weren't any like modern animals, organisms that look like modern day organisms alive during the time of the dinosaurs. But here's, but we, but that's not true. We actually find beavers. We find hedgehogs. We find rabbits. We find Tasmanian devils. We find, you know, uh, what was the other one? I mean, we find flamingos. Right? We find all these organisms right there next to dinosaurs. And so they make it sound like secular uh, biologists are just lying to their audience. Like, hey, they've known all along that there were beavers like living right next to dinosaurs. And they're not telling you that. Isn't that the impression that the audience is getting? And when I listen to Carl Warner, and I've listened to him many times, he leaves his audience with that impression that there were actual beavers living there. Now, sometimes he says there are beaver-like organisms living there, but then when he sums everything up, he always says, well, there was hundreds of animals, a lot of them had really weird names and they were quite different, but we also expect that there would be modern organisms living with dinosaurs. And we do find like, there's like these 10 modern organisms living. So there's like beavers and, you know, he goes through that whole list again. I think almost anybody listening to him is going to walk away thinking that they found fossils that are beavers living with dinosaurs. All right. And so he technically might know that that's not true, but he isn't helping his audience understand that. That is deception, right? That's allowing um, the audience to believe a lie. Because you know what that audience is going to do? Because I know it, because I've talked to people who have listen to Carl Warner and I've listened I've I've talked to people who have heard these statements over and over and over again on different videos from Answers in Genesis and other places about these modern representatives that were living with dinosaurs of modern organisms alive today and every one of them believes that those organisms that were found are just like the ones alive today Right, that that's what they found, that there was a beaver living with dinosaurs. And so you might use semantics to kind of like say, well, they're not exactly the same. We didn't we all we mean is that there were organisms that were had similarities to modern or modern mammals today. Um, okay. All right. Sure. That's just like saying, what if somebody published an article that said dolphin like marine reptiles were more dolphin like than previously thought? Are we then to say that we have to believe that dolphins were found with reptiles? Right? 
marine reptiles from the dinosaur age? I mean, there's ichthyosaurs. We call them ichthyosaurs. But, you know, if you read ichthyosaur fossil language, they compare them to, they have similarities to features of dolphins. Just like that paper I just read about the beaver. This, this, I'm uh, sorry, that Jurassic uh, Dodecodontin. All right. In that paper about that Dodecodontin, it mentions that it has a feature that's like a beaver. Right. And so we could point to many other papers where the description is just is trying to find a comparison. It's trying to find something that's analogous to it in order for you to be able to visualize like, oh, yeah, I, I can see that it has characteristics. So, like these ichthyosaurs um, probably had, had body shapes that were incredibly similar to modern day dolphins. But I wouldn't say that modern dolphins or dolphins have been found with dinosaurs just because there's something that looks like a dolphin found with dinosaurs, right? It would, it would be completely inappropriate to say, because once you study that dolph that dolphin like thing, that's an ichthyosaur, you realize this thing is a reptile. It's not a mammal. It has other anatomical characteristics, part of it, its bones that will tell you this is not a mammal at all. And so it'd be completely inappropriate for me to try to tell a naive audience that we found dolphins. Even though you can find popular articles and popular expressions of dolphin-like things that have been found with the dinosaurs. And you see, that's what Carl Warner's kind of doing. He's saying, like, you know, the popular press, like this, the front cover of this article, and there was some popular articles that were written that called this the Jurassic Beaver. And all they're doing is just they're just saying, like, this thing had like a beaver-like feature. So now you can imagine like a creature like a beaver. All right, so that's like a modern animal. But that doesn't mean we have found a modern mammal with dinosaurs, right? Any more so than we have found a dolphin with dinosaurs. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know what else to say. I think this is like crystal clear. Right. Well, I'm not going to go through all the other examples that Carl Warner um, says because this beaver thing is 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 enough. Right. It, it it is singularly a clear example of misleading the audience. And this uh, this YouTube uh, channel, um, he clearly is under the misimpression as well that this thing is like a beaver. Right. And he, I think he understands it's like a beaver. It's not exactly a beaver, but I think he still believes it's in the same general kind of organism that beavers are in. I guess if you believe that all mammals are a kind, well, then yes, it is a mammal. Well, it's a mammalia form. Uh, so if you, you really have to have a broad, broad understanding of what mammals are, because you're going to have to include some more diversity than you're used to thinking of in mammals. And if all of them are a kind, like God made mammal, then yes, mammals are found with dinosaurs. And if they're all related to one another, then I guess things like modern mammals are found with dinosaurs. Um, but that's kind of like saying, you know, dolphins are vertebrates, and so are ichthyosaurs. And so because they're both vertebrates, vertebrates are found with dinosaurs and they're found today so modern vertebrates have been found with dinosaurs it's kind of like a kind of a meaningless statement it doesn't really help you understand much of anything it doesn't really represent the fossil record very well uh, because it gives you the impression that oh if i just uh, that that if if i brought those uh fossils back to life that they would be just like the animals are alive today. No, they'd be quite different, right? They would have the general characteristics in common, but they're not members of the individual groups that are alive today if you're going to split groups into different kinds of organisms. And you want to think that you know God has these different kinds that are completely separate and have never been associated with each other through common ancestry. Because here's the thing, that beaver fossil within the young earth creationist viewpoint worldview that 
sorry, quotes beaver fossil from the Jurassic is definitely not a member of any living kind of mammal alive today. Right? It's a member of an extinct kind of mammal. And so therefore it isn't like modern mammals. Right? It isn't like any modern mammal. And almost every single mammal fossil out of the 400 and whatever number of species that Carl Warner mentions that are found in the with dinosaurs. I think there may be an exception if the platypus-like fossil might be related similarly enough to modern-day um, uh, egg-laying animals that they might that some creationists might consider them to be in the same kind. If that's true, then I think he could appropriately say that there is one fossil for which a member in the Jurassic or in the dinosaur age is part of the same kind of living group that we have alive today that we would call the modern mammals. And it might be he might be that might be an accurate statement. Right? Because they're 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 related by common ancestry and so there there's enough continuity there. But all the other mammals that are found in the age of the dinosaurs, we don't have any mammal group alive today for which you could put them inside that group. Right? They're all extinct. And that's the interesting pattern of the fossil record. Carl Warner's trying to like somehow make this sound like it supports creationism, that there are modern mammals, and that is why the stress on the modern mammal. This is where the deception comes into place, into play, right? He's trying as hard as he can to get his audience to think, oh, there were organisms just like organisms alive today that are mammals living with the dinosaurs. And so, right, there couldn't have been any evolution. There couldn't have really been any change over again because because everyone knows that that was, you know, 50 to, you know, 65 to 150, 250 million years ago. How could you have the same exact organisms that far back? And the thing is, you didn't. All right? Once you really sit down and think about it and look at these fossils. Um. So all I'm asking, all I'm asking from all of this is that if Carl Warner wants to continue to make claims about this, he needs to use appropriate language and he needs to make sure his audience understands that when he says that something is like a beaver, like a squirrel, like a Tasmanian devil, like a possum, like a rabbit, right, like a hedgehog, that like just means it has some superficial appearance of similarity, but not that it actually is one of those things. Like I said before, I guarantee you, nobody in the audience listening to Carl Warner or listening to Answers in Genesis speaker, especially Calvin Smith, no one comes away from listening to one of their videos thinking and understanding the reality of the nature of those fossils. They all come away with a misconception. And if you know that your audience is coming away with that misconception and you are doing nothing to try to fix that, then you are deceiving your audience, right? You're lying to your audience. You're allowing them to believe something that's not true. And they're going to go out and they're going to, well, I mean, some of their audience comes and tells me, right, that, oh, you don't understand. I mean, this is, you know, those things are those. We have found beavers with dinosaurs. And that, you know, that rocks the evolutionary world. How can you possibly believe that beavers, just like today's beavers, could have been alive in the past? I have been told that directly by folks that have listened to these videos. They insist that beavers have been found. So this YouTube channel and Carl Warner want to play semantics with this and say that that's not what they meant. All right, and that's not what they mean. That they understand that an actual beaver or anything that's related to a beaver has not been found in the fossil record with dinosaurs. That they know that and all they're saying is that 
features like modern mammals, some characteristics like modern mammals, like, like an organism with a flattened tail that's like an organism that has a flattened tail today has been found in the fossil record. And if that's all they mean, right, and that's all they intend it to mean, right, then they need to find a new way to communicate that because they are doing such a terrible job of communicating that no one understands that that's what they mean. You see, they're trying to tell me that that's what they mean because they want to say that we're not lying. We, we understand that's not exactly like uh, a modern-day organism. But that's not what the audience thinks. It is not what the audience comes away from, those talks thinking. Do I expect them to clean up their language, clean up their descriptions, such that they represent the reality of the fossil record? I don't think so, because if they do, and their audience understands what they're saying, assuming they really are trying to say that, <laughs> once their audience realizes, this thing isn't a beaver, right? It's not a rodent. This thing is clearly a completely different type of organism. Then the 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 punchiness of their argument just disappears right carl warner's whole stick his whole spiel with all this is to emphasize that there are that organisms haven't changed like the organisms that were living alongside the dinosaurs were just like the organisms alive today and see we have the fossil record to prove it right? we found these things in the fossil record so as soon as you start to explain that well actually they're not just like the organisms alive today there's nothing like them. They're extinct organisms that were not related to today's organisms. All of a sudden, the thing that you made a big deal about is if this was like a, a, a like, um, you know, that this was an absolute gotcha evolution can't be true because the fossil record shouldn't look like this. All of a sudden, that entire argument just like it evaporates. So it's kind of hard to go back now and say like well yeah you know let me fix this with the audience let me let me uh, because they're going to realize that you were a fraud you know <laughs> in representing these things which is why Carl Warner and Answers in Genesis and others who use Carl Warner's arguments the problem is Answers in Genesis has never really tested his arguments they just believe what he says rather than going to the original literature um what they will fall back on again is they'll say, well, look, this is the way evolutionists, this is the way these fossils have been talked about in the press. So it's your fault. You're the one that called it the Jurassic Beaver. This is what Calvin Smith says. He, he, he just says that. He's just like, well, you called it the Jurassic Beaver, so it's your fault. You need to fix it. You need to go back and say this really isn't a beaver. I'm sorry, that is lame. That is lame. You want to call yourself a scientist? You want to say you've done all this research? And then you're just relying on second and third sources? You know, these are, you know, a, a newspaper article that's just popularizing and trying to explain what this fossil may have looked like is just a secondary source. And it's not describing the original fossil. And anyone who's a somebody who isn't interested in the meaning of these fossils and trying to explain the origins of these organisms and presumably creation scientists are interested in explaining the origins of that particular fossil where did it come from what is it related to what barrowman does it belong to right they should be interested in the original description right they simply aren't going to go to the popular press and like pull their data from there right so you're not being scientific at all if you're just using popular press stuff and then you're saying like it's not our fault we didn't we didn't know that it really wasn't a beaver uh because we just read this uh this newspaper article and we just believed like the description in there and most of those articles they call it the jurassic beaver and often in quotes and then when they go through the description they talk about how it's not a beaver I, it's like it, you still don't really have an excuse Right? You don't have any reason for not knowing that that thing isn't a beaver. All right, so, um, yeah, I'm I'm sorry. I'm being super repetitive. Um, but part of it's just, I, it's almost like unbelief that, that there could be that much pushback 
against just trying to there could be that much pushback against just the simple concept that this thing happens to have a little bit a little bit of a of a wide um verticular uh vertebral extension in some of its caudal vertebrae in its tail and because of that it could have a somewhat flattened tail and then because of that somebody like said well that seems kind of like you know that could have the same habit as like a beaver it could be swimming in the water they could have said it was like an otter right or if they thought this thing was climbing trees, they could have said it's like a flying squirrel, right? Because it has a flattened tail as well. And somehow, just because of that one character, because look, tell me, can you point to any other characteristic of this particular fossil that screams beaver, right? That is like a beaver, has similarities to a beaver, is analogous to a beaver. There's nothing else that is part of this fossil, this little tiny fossil, by the way, <laughs> which is an adult that tells you like this thing is a beaver and so to say that just because somewhere in an article 16 years ago somebody labeled it as a beaver that scientists are being dishonest because that's that's really the claim warner is making he's saying scientists are being dishonest they should have all right you know i'm totally comfortable at this point with you decide Am I being deceptive? Am I a deceiver here? Am I misinformed? Is this thing really so similar to a beaver that it's appropriate to call it like a beaver and to be able to say that this means that modern mammals lived with dinosaurs? Right? Am I am I being am I overreacting to that particular claim? I maybe somebody can explain to me how this thing is so similar to a modern mammal that it's appropriate to say that uh, a modern group of mammals lived with the dinosaurs. I need somebody to connect the dots for me there because uh, maybe I'm missing something, right? So am I just like ultimately trying to deceive all of you with this explanation that I'm giving right now? Do you think that that do you think when you listen to that video and, and if you've ever heard Calvin Smith and the art well go back to my first video I cover Calvin Smith or maybe it was the second video where I talk about Calvin Smith and I read his article and he talks about modern mammals and he mentions these specific animals and says that beavers were found right do you think that do you read that as they're not really beavers, but they kind of have similar features to them, so it's okay for him to say that? And you think his audience understands that? Right? Really? Does does do any of you, maybe you young earth creationists out there, right? Are are have you always known that these weren't anything like a beaver? And this is not surprising at all because you totally got it from, you know, whenever you heard um, Warner talk, you were like, oh, yeah, I get it. That thing, is, that thing has a similar feature to a beaver, but we understand it's not a beaver, right? It's not in the same kind of organism at all. Yeah, I just, I'm confused, right? So, so maybe I'm just completely missing the boat here. And I'm the one that's like uh, making stuff up and I'm trying to deceive you. I'm not trying to make you like believe in evolution or anything that all I'm doing is just talking about the facts. What are the observations? And then how do we how do we at least communicate the facts? You can have your interpretation of the facts and be different. And I'm I'm not I'm not so much concerned about that. Right? You could say like here's why none of the organisms with the dinosaurs um are similar to any of today's or or i shouldn't use the word similar there that any of the organisms that are alive with the dinosaurs are ancestors of any of the animals that are alive today because that's ultimately what, what i'm kind of saying right that that beaver thing is not the ancestor of any living thing alive today right in the creationist scheme it is a completely different branch a completely different lineage, a completely different part of the orchard, right? Um, that had or had individuals that lived before the flood, 
survived presumably through the flood, but left no remnants in the fossil record after the flood. So they went extinct. Mm -hmm. Right? So they're unrelated to anything alive today. Right? And that could be that could be your interpretation of all those 400 different mammals. Like all of them represented things that were alive before the flood and they all went extinct. And there were other things like cats and dogs and elephants and horses and whales and you know you can just go through your list of all your major kinds you know there's like you know a hundred different kinds of mammals alive today and all of them only are found in the upper part of the fossil record above dinosaurs and maybe there's a reason for that like maybe they got sorted differently in the flood right you have to come up with an explanation for that um but it is a lie, all right, to say that some of the groups, you know, that beavers are found with dinosaurs, such that they have descendants alive today, that there's that group of organisms alive with the dinosaurs, and they still have descendants today. It may be true, but we haven't found evidence for that yet. What I'm saying is, this is not evidence for that. Carl Warner's evidence is not for what he thinks it is. He can hope that someday we'll find actual representatives of living mammalian groups that are alive today with the dinosaurs. And he absolutely, I'm sure, believes that is the case, that they exist in the fossil record somewhere. All I'm saying is we haven't found them yet. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Other than possibly a platypus-like thing, right? Which you might be able to classify in the platypus kind that might i'll give you i'll give you credit for that one that might be a group that might be an organism that we have found with dinosaurs that still has living members today but i can't think of any others that would fit that description of the things that carl warner claims all right we got to call it quits there um I really don't know how to finish this off. I don't really care to talk about this uh, anymore. I'm not really interested in arguing about it. Um, I just, you know, this is my last attempt to show this YouTube uh, channel uh, owner just beg him because he was unwilling to read the original paper to just look at that original paper and say, is it okay for me to claim that modern mammals, that this thing represents a modern mammal. All right. And if he thinks it represents a modern mammal, I want to know what that mammal is that's alive today um, and or has been alive for the last thousands of years. Yeah, great. Sorry, long slog. Uh, got that off my mind. Yeah, till next time. Hang in there. We'll talk to you later. Fun stuff. Bye-bye.